You too. My name is Trey. Welcome to What Kind of Change. Uh, so right now we are finally getting some updates on the Carly Russell situation. Um, we watched. I watched the whole perfect conference, and I'm going to go over it for you guys. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and show you what they start off with. It is quite quite crazy. Let's start right now. Okay, so what we're going to begin with, right, is um, Carly, as y'all already know, is she said she saw a toddler. She said that it was um, um, a, a toddler there, and she went after the toddler, and she got kidnapped. But I'm going to let him explain her story. But first, let's start what led up to the event. We know today. On July 13th, at approximately 8.20 p.m., Carly left work from a business at the summit. Surveillance video from her place of employment shows Carly concealed a dark-colored bathrobe, a roll of toilet paper, and other items belonging to the business prior to her departure. She ordered food from Tzatziki's. I just want to clarify that right quick. He said that she concealed a bathrobe and some uh, other items. She, that, he's pretty much saying she stole. She stole some item from her job, a black robe and some towels that were never recovered. She took them with her. She didn't leave them at the scene. And so that's a very interesting point that she would take stuff from her job and then disappear. Let's continue at the colonnade and traveled there. She then traveled to Target on 280, where she purchased some granola bars and Cheez-Its. From there, she remained in the parking lot at that shopping center until 9.21 p.m. when she drove to I-459. Carly communicated on her cell phone with individuals known to her while on her path of travel up to the point of calling 911 at 9.34 p.m. And at this time, we will play the 911 call in its entirety. All right, so we're about to go over the 911 call. Um, let me get it up to that. It's going to be crazy, man. I have no idea. All right, so we're going to get over to the uh, 911 call, and we're going to see what happened with that whole thing. I want to say this, and he's going to mention it again. Remember, she did all this. She stole. She went to Target. She got food. She bought she got some um, snacks, and then she made this 911 call shortly after she did all that. All right, let's continue. Hi, I am on a Now, I want you to keep in mind, this 911 call is not happening when she's outside of the vehicle. She is making this call as she is going towards the boy. She's describing all of this in detail, but she's making the call as she pulls over. Remember that. She's describing this boy in detail as she has already pulled over. And if you remember watching my last video with the camera footage, you remember how far away she was. So the fact that she was describing this boy as detailed as she could, I mean, as much as she could give, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense that she was able to do that while she was so far away. But let's continue. Yeah. Okay. What is he wearing? Um, it's a white t-shirt, and it doesn't look like he has any pants on. It looks like a diaper. 
And you don't see any cars anywhere? No, no cars anywhere. Okay. All right. What's your name? My name is Harvey Russell. And you don't see any injuries on the child from where you're at, correct? No, no. But I can't lose these and I did. Okay, try to keep an eye on them for the best we can because I don't want you to lose track of them. Um, okay. All right, and do they have shoes on? No. Are she not that I can see? I can't really see that one. Okay. All right. I've got them on the way, okay? Just try to stay, keep an eye on them, but the officers are on the way, okay? Okay, thanks. Thank you. Okay, bye. So that's the part of it. So we're gonna skip it. We're gonna Call. skip ahead a little bit. Um, this will give us a little bit more detail. But just remember all this. Please remember all of that as we continue with this call. She's describing this kid in detail and saying all these things. Wow, she's so far away. So let's continue. Since conscious and speaking with paramedics when she was transported to UAB, detectives were able to obtain a brief statement from her prior to being treated and released. During the statement, she told detectives that while traveling down the interstate, she saw a baby walking down the side of the road and called 911. She stated when she got out of her vehicle to check on the child, a man came out of the trees and mumbled that he was checking on the baby. She claimed that the man then picked her up and she screamed. She stated he then made her go over a fence. She claims he then forced her into a car and the next thing she remembers is being in the trailer of an 18-wheeler. She stated that the male was with a female. However, she never saw the female, only hearing her voice. She also told detectives she could hear a baby crying. Detectives, the male had orange hair with a big bald spot on the back. She said she was able to escape the 18-wheeler and fled on foot, only to be captured again, and was put in a car. <laughs> okay, so... I just want to break that down. So she said she was kidnapped by a person who then, now remember, she walks into the woods. So this guy takes her all the way through these woods and not throw her in the truck, not the 18-wheeler itself. She got thrown into an 18-wheeler trailer and somehow managed to escape from a trailer. Have you ever been inside a trailer? Okay, when they lock that thing to make sure nothing comes out, you think she's going to be able to escape out of a trailer? And all she could hear was the baby crying. So if that story is to make sense, she is pretty much saying that she was in the trailer and somehow found a way to escape the trailer and then got kidnapped again? Let's continue, man. I just want y'all to keep all this in mind. Try to make, make sense of it. But if you are the most staunchest Carly Russell person ever, you believe everything she's saying, try to make it make sense in your head. She claimed she was then blindfolded but was not tied up because the captor said they did not want to leave impressions on her wrists. She said that they took her into a house and made You know, now doesn't that make sense? She said that they didn't tie her up because they didn't want to leave impressions on her wrists. Pretty much, to make her story make sense, she has to say that why there is no other evidence of a struggle or being tied up or anything. She pretty much, because she doesn't have any of that. She didn't think that far ahead. So she has to say that, oh, no, they didn't want to tie me up because, you know, they didn't want to leave impressions. So that's why it didn't look like anything happened to me. Made her get undressed. She believes they took pictures of her, but she does not remember them having any physical or sexual contact. She stated the next day. Remember she... that no physical contact and no sexual contact, because, you know, if they had had sexual contact with her, they're going to run one of those tests on her. Right. So if that test comes up empty, the story is going to fall apart again. All right, so she has to say there was no sexual contact, no physical contact. They didn't touch me, burn me, or anything. Um, and they didn't leave any impressions on my wrist. So pretty much nothing happened. Except for they threw me in a trailer and took some pictures. Woke up because she was and was fed cheese crackers by the female. She said the woman also played with her hair but could not remember. Now, remember, she said she was fed cheese crackers. Now, do you remember earlier in the story that she said she had bought, they showed that she had bought some cheeses? Come on, man. Anything else? At some point, she was put back in a vehicle she claims was able to escape while it was in the West Hoover area. She told detectives she Somehow ran through lots of woods until she came out near her residence. During this interview, detectives noted that Carly had a small injury to her lip, and she claimed that her head... 
She ran through, she got, she escaped from this car, ran all the way through the woods that came out right by her residence. So she, she knows these woods so well that she managed to run all the way through them and then escape to be right by her residence. People, come on. Ed was hurting. She also had a tear on her shirt. Detectives also noted that she had $107 cash in her right sock. She had $107 in her right sock. Now, you could probably wonder why that's significant. Well, let's keep it moving. Out of respect for Carly and her family, detectives did not press for additional information in this interview and made plans to speak with her in detail after giving her time to rest. Detectives continue analyzing data from Carly's cell phone that was left behind at the scene. We enlisted the help of the United States Secret Service in conducting this analysis. Part of what data includes several internet searches. And the so, so right now we're about to go and see what was she searching for leading up, days leading up to her mysterious kidnapping and mysterious abduction. Days leading up to her disappearance that I think are very relevant to this case. On July 11th at 7.30 a.m., the term, do you have to pay for an Amber Alert was searched. On July 13th at 1.03 a.m., the day of her disappearance, the term, how to take money from a register without being caught was searched. On July 13th at 2.13 a.m., the day of her disappearance, the term, Birmingham bus station, was searched. On July 13th, 2.35 a.m., a search for a one-way bus ticket from Birmingham to Nashville was conducted with a departure date of July 13th. Full bus ticket, one-way stop. Why is that significant? I want to say this right quick. So if you don't remember, when she got kidnapped, what did she leave behind? Her wig, her cell phone, and her pocketbook. Now, remember, she was found with $107 in her sock. Why would she have cash in her sock? Well, she left her pocketbook. In other words, she left her wallet, right? So she made sure that everything got left behind to show that she didn't try to go do anything. No electronic transactions to show where she was at. Because she took a debit card or a credit card during this mysterious um, kidnapping and she had bought anything, right? It would have showed up. All this stuff would have showed up in her card statements showing that the car would use. And what do they do when they do that? Boop, they're going to pull up security cameras. So she took cash with her to make sure that would not happen. But the only thing is we just got to hope that she did that she, that she did not spend any money. Because there is a chance if she did spend money anywhere, even if it's cash, it may pop up on the security footage of any store. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, she was here. Ooh, that would be a bad look. And remember, the cops, I think, I don't know if they said it yet, but they say that they had more stuff to give and there was other stuff that you could show on her phone, but they decided not to share that. On July 13th at 1210 PM, a search for the movie taken a film about abduction was conducted. There were two searches related to Amber alerts on a computer at Carly's. Sorry about that guys. So sometimes I'll be um, just looking at the screen and not looking over at me. So let's let me rewind that back. 13th, 2.35 a.m., a search for a one-way bus ticket from Birmingham to Nashville was conducted with a departure date of July 13th. On July 13th at 12.10 p.m., a search for the movie Taken, a film about abduction, was conducted. There were two searches related to Amber Alerts on a computer at Carly's place of employment, including one regarding the maximum age of an Amber Alert. There were other searches on Carly's phone that appeared to shed some light on her mindset, but out of respect for her privacy, we will not be releasing the content of those searches at this time. We've asked to interview Carly a second time, but have not been granted that request. As you can see, there are many questions left to be answered, but only Carly can provide those answers. Just, just in case you missed it, um, they were not able to get another interview with Carly. And that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, that's pretty much all that happened. So let's take it, let's break it all down. Okay. I'm going to be Carly Russell for a second. 
<clears throat> so Carly, tell us what happened. So what happened is I, I saw a little boy um, and he was, you know, running around in a diaper. And I knew I had to do something. I had to make a change. And so what I did was I went after the little boy. And when I got to the woods, there was a man saying that he was going to help me with the toddler. And then he took me. Um, he, he had like red hair. He was balding in the back. So he threw me in the uh, trailer of an 18 wheeler. And they didn't tie me up or anything. So that's why, so I, I wouldn't have any rest imprint, imprints on my um, arm. Um, no physical contact, no sexual contact. I heard a baby crying while I was in the trailer. And I heard like another female voice. And I, I don't know, it was all happening so fast. Um, but anyway, I was able to escape. I was able to escape the trailer. Um, oh, by the way, they may have took some pictures of me, maybe. I was blindfolded. I just, I just can't remember. So I escaped the trailer. Um, and as I escaped the trailer, I got picked up again in a vehicle. Um, and I was driven all around. And then I managed to escape the car. I was running through the woods. I was running through the woods and um, so I was so scared. And then I came out of the woods and I was right by my residence and, and, and that's when you guys came along around that time. It was just so scary and um, please, if I could just have some time to myself to be alone, I, I just can't do this anymore. And that's the whole story. Does it sound real to you? I don't know. Obviously, don't know the answers. But what it sounds like is she went to go do some rendezvous. Um, and that rendezvous probably did happen. Um, and then she came back within 48 hours and got dropped off somewhere by the woods and came out. Um, maybe she was, uh, you know, she maybe she was doing something with another guy. Or maybe she was doing something with some friends. Or maybe she really wanted to go see a concert. I don't know why she would do all that. I don't know why she would steal from her house. I mean, still from her job, then do all this stuff, then leave just to come back. Like, I don't know why you would hide all of that. And why would you be looking up how to pay for an Amber Alert? Why would you carry cash in your sock? I just, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But I, obviously, I don't know the answer. And I'm sure we'll probably never know because she declined interview. Maybe she'll come out later and say it was this or that. But who knows? Excuse me. So y'all let me know what y'all think. Goodbye.